welcome back. We're back, Steph. How are you feeling after last night's game? We're recording this on Sunday morning. <laughs> less is more. Less is more. <laughs> yeah. Let's, a... let's let's say we could never watch that game ever again. <laughs> yeah, I mean, that was a that was a shocking nil nil draw against you, though. But I, I mean, I don't know what to. I, I, yeah. Yeah. I'm sure we will be spending the rest of uh, the coming week uh, on the channels uh, berating. Uh, who knows? It's not about that today, but I mean, what a fucking snooze fest! <laughs> yeah, I think my, um, my my summary that I'd rather I'd rather watch paint dry them than yeah, watch my game. I think when we're on the watch song, I'm sure you'll probably say I'd rather watch my cat have a shit. I'm not even yeah. joking. I'm mm, not. Mm. <laughs> anyway, yeah, we'll thank you for joining me this morning. Uh, we're back on Pub Chat. Just want to say thank you to everyone. There was a few people who put some suggestions in. We're going to start um, using your video suggestions moving forward, uh, but we thought this would be a good one uh, to talk about uh, today, which effectively, if you cast your mind back to when we were flush with cash, Steph, and we did spend loads of money, really, really fucking badly back in the mm -hmm. summer of 2018 with Yi Hong Lee, we spent 190 million euros, roughly, so 150 million pounds. Mm -hmm. What if we'd spent that better? Who could we have gotten? What would our squad look like? And where would we be? <laughs> Shoot. Shoot, yeah. I think, um, it's just confirmed, I think it's, it's summer 2017, isn't it? Because this 2017, yes. 18. Sorry, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Um, it's conscious that even 18, we did spend a lot on Higuain and um, who was it, Caldara and stuff like that, mm. which in itself was probably needs an investigation and and what the fuck happened <laughs> that summer as well. But I think I think it all it all stems from um, 2017, 2018 when yes, uh, yeah. After I don't know, probably four or five years of just being crippled from um, the Berlusconi era and, and not spending anything, um, we. We, you know, we bounced around free free agent signings, and you know, it, it, it was very much a, even just trying to sign the likes of. We had a little bits of splashes of, splashes of investments of like someone like Carlos Baca came in or Bertolacci, where we'd spend twenty mil or thirty mil, but it would be very much like a, a languishing um, negotiation uh, just to kind of get it across the line, and that would be our one sort of hope that it would work out. Um, mm. That sounds sounds like oh, Milan of the current. Day. but um but yeah yeah i think going from that and then equally then um yeah young hong lee came in and um essentially in, injected a lot of money uh, in, in that summer it was it was the dawn of a of a new era uh what, what, what seemed to on paper and, and the time where fans were able to at least get excited from a transfer market perspective and getting getting europa league spot finished the previous season um which i think was on the last day um i remember it was yeah it yeah. was. I remember who we played against. It was like a sort of lower team. In, I remember San Siro. I think Delafeo scores a goal in a San Siro against someone. Um, oh my God, I'm anyway. casting my mind back here. But yeah. yeah. It's probably, I don't know, some random like Genoa or something like that. But, um, but yeah, anyway, so establishing a Europa League finish and, and ultimately understanding the ambitions of the club to get back into the Champions League and mm -hmm. to compete in the league. Um, and in Juventus being in a dominant sort of era. Um, signings were needed to be made and money was needed to be spent so that immediately happened and you know quickly into the window we saw the likes of it was it Matteo Musaccio come and get signed Ricardo Rodriguez uh Frank Kessi I think were the first three signings um followed by like Andrea Conti Andre Silva Bonucci. Nikola Kalinic Bonucci um Fabio Borini um it was it was very much yeah, throw Bonini shit at the wall yeah. Yeah, throw I mean, shit at the wall and see what sticks, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah. I mean, we signed, I think, eleven players or something like that. Um, and we, what what was the total spend again? One. So we actually, uh, we actually more than that. We we uh, this is on transfer mark. We actually yeah. <clears throat> brought in thirty two players um, mm. in total, um, and we let go of thirty five, and we spent one hundred and eighty six million mm. euros, mm. and we only brought in 40 so we had a minus 146 million euro deficit that year which is the biggest we've ever had um yeah and yeah. i know i touched on 2018 you're quite right it was the 2017 was the first one but we also spent loads in 2018 and mm -hmm. we were it was even worse and we'll go into the players in a moment we spent mm -hmm. so much money and wasted it that we then spent mm -hmm. another hundred odd million the following year to try and right those wrongs and got yeah. even further in the shit i mean yeah yeah which is i think what would be good in this video today is 
I I would like to cover the squad we had mm. towards the previous season, um, okay. which and then equally my stance, which would be not to spend that much amount of money and essentially mm. rolling a dice on a massive risk um, when we really should have been growing from a stability perspective little by little, but going for players for more in my in my opinion quality quality over quantity. Um, yeah. which I think a lot of a lot of fans kind of ask for. So look, I think the the from the signings that were made, the biggest red flag for me was that we signed a centre back, Musaccio, the first like the, I think the first signing, or second he was, time, yeah, um, to pair him with Alessio Romagnoli, who was basically our well, not our club captain because I think Montalivo was still there at the time, but ultimately yeah. was was basically the captain anyway, um, and and you know a month later an opportunity arises in Bonucci and we take it, which. Don't get me wrong. At the time, it was taking Juventus's youngest, best, you know, not best. He was a talisman. Defender, it was a talisman, talisman for yeah, them. Yeah. yeah, huge, huge, and it was a, it was a statement signing, and I, you know, we were all getting gas for it. But it was a bit of a red flag in a sense, going like, okay, what formation are we playing here now? Because we kind of built a side in the market so far for a four a four three three. We played four three three the season before that, and now we've got three centre backs that probably are starting, and it just it. it it was a bit chaotic in, in my mind, and, and and we signed two strikers, and then we had Kutrona coming through. So I think for me, I like to go back to the squad that we ended the previous season with, and, and who probably should have stayed, continued, and equally that leads to probably how we understand what signings we should have gone for in the departments that we needed to do. Maybe just like maybe three to four signings, but of higher quality, and maybe spending. 30 to 40 mil maybe 50 mil on each of them or equally maybe yeah running that down and putting 20 20 and then 50 wherever it might be so i mean I'll, I'll first start with the squad that we had and and players i think we should have let go of um in the defensive department there's probably not much to scream home about i think the one call out would be that we signed in conti which obviously he was great at atalanta don't he was he up, was yeah and had and had a horrible stem of injuries when he joined milan however at the time we had um, Ignacio Abate, he was a bit older, well, he's 30, 30 years old at the time. He could probably give a, couple, a season or two more. Um, David Calabria was coming through at 20 years old, who has, has eventually got that spot anyway. Um, so ultimately, the question is, do we, did we need a right back? Did we need to sign one and spend that much money on someone like we did with Isabella Conti? Um, in the midfield department, um, Locatelli was there. Um, mm -hmm. Oh, Lucas Biglia, that was one of the signings. We basically said... Locatelli go away because we believe in someone a 31 year old Lucas Bilia then more than we did you and so, Hakan and Hakan come in as well but but the DM position more so oh I see yeah yeah yeah. Um, yeah yeah so I think that was a massive mistake in my mind not to say we spoke about Locatelli yesterday on the live stream but yeah. not to say Locatelli was for me a game changer but it was a really poor decision to basically say no to a youth team homegrown 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 yeah. playing really well with fantastic moments scoring the winner against Juventus, etc., and then we basically we gave we gave fucking Lazio all that money for like a, a thirty-one year old DM who was fucking awful. So selling Locatelli in place for Bilio was a massive mistake. Um, I looked at the rest of the midfield where we also make some other mistakes. The Bertolacci wasn't great; mm. needed to go. I thought Jirai Kuchka was really good. He was one of our yeah. best players around that time. We let I him agree. go. Um, Mario Pasalic on loan from Chelsea. Why didn't we secure that? Secure that long-term deal he's a fantastic player and he's really good right now for Atalanta and he was good for us so I think there were there were some options for the players in the squad to stay look your likes of Andrea Polis and your Jose Mauris no they need to go Jose Sosa not good enough no you know maybe Mat Matias Fernandez, Fernandez wasn't, no. good he wasn't good enough he wasn't good enough so th there was there was needed some some injection of quality um and then I think from the winger positions De La Feu had a good season we probably got it we could have gone to make that deal a long term we should have really because we we didn't address the left winger signing position by signing Fabio Borini um and then at a striker position where we had Luis Adriano, Lapodula, mm -hmm. um uh Carlos Baca and by Niang do you go again with uh, with maybe Baca and then you say do we did we need to sign Kalinic and Andre Silva for a combined fee of I mean like I think like 60 mil basically so, like, I think there is where you can where you can spot the squad and equally Suso as well, giving him more of an outlet. 
And another another one who, had, who went on to do really well for, <clears throat> I think, Marseille and Sevilla was Lucas Ocampos. Ocampos, so I was about to say yeah. him. He was a yeah. good little player, him. A good little player. And he, and he really came into his own towards the tail mm. end of that season. So I, I think we shouldn't have made, a starting point would have been not to make so many radical changes in the squad. Keep the players with, you know, a bit more of a higher ceiling and the players that were doing quite well for us, whether they were 30 years old or whether they were 22 mm. years old. So your backers and your coaches, and then obviously the younger players like Ocampos and and, and De La Feu. and then not have to deal so much on the winger positions. Maybe sign one a maximum, sign one centre forward, and then and then you got backer as the other option. Um, and then in midfield you have got Locatelli there, you have got Bonaventura, you've got um, I can't remember who else we spoke about here, uh, Pasalic as well off the bench, and then you sign one centre midfielder, and then in defence yeah you go you go and sign a centre back, and then but mm. and then maybe. Do you, I mean, at left back, I think we needed someone to come in. I can't see who we signed. Yeah, left I mean, back. Le- left back um, we were. We had, oh my God. Yeah, this, oh my God. We, I didn't even, even brought one in. Oh, we had uh, Felicioli. Oh, yeah, yeah I sorry. Mean, like, Rodriguez. Rodriguez was signed. Rodriguez, Rodriguez okay. yeah, yeah. Who well, was, was relatively solid, but it was, it's, it's more to do with, I think it, when you address the spine of the team, where we needed the actual spots, for me, mm. was a, was a, a standout centre forward, someone who could basically take over the mantle from Carlos Baca. Um, and we're talking about the money that we spent on Kalinic and Andre Silva, combining that pot and signing us a 50 to 60 million euro striker. Um, we go with centre midfield. We need we need someone to come in, whether it was Kessie or some, someone else. We need someone to come in to basically be a starter in a 4-3-3. Yep. Um, we need a centre back to come in to be the starter alongside Romagnoli. You probably get a, a safe signing with, with, with at left back with Ricardo Rodriguez and then maybe a winger. So for me, four to five signings would have been more than enough. You've got centre forward, your centre mid, centre back, yep. left back, and maybe another winger to to at least kick us on. And, and at, yeah, whether that transfer market fee gets to maybe 100 to 120 mils a total signing spree, mm-hmm. fine. But it's a bit more safer than spending like over 200 and essentially betting the house on the get top four, which we didn't do. And even if we got Europa League again, we would have kicked on a little bit. But from a sensibility perspective and cash injection, we should have been a bit more sensible. And I think I'll let you come in with some ideas with some names. Mm-hmm. But I think that's where we really should have really ran, ran it back a little bit rather than being so chaotic and just going for anyone and anyone. 100%. I mean, it was it was obviously hindsight to 2020. And mm-hmm. before I go on with sort of like what was available in the market and what we spent, you know, because we spent not even more overall, but we actually spent more individually than we do now, which is also mm-hmm. interesting. Before I go on to that, I want to know what your opinion is on this. Do you think that the sort of um, philosophies of our management is wrong at the wrong time? So what I mean by that is it was clear that our recruitment was crap in the sort of um, late 20 teens, right? You know, the 2016 to sort of 2018, 2019, until Zlatan and Kier and all that came in. Um, it was really, really crap. But I think the philosophy of what the what they were trying to do is probably what we need now, which is trying to find quality in every position and spending big, whereas now we're probably needing what we needed back then, which is looking at the smart, smart signings that are probably lesser, which probably put us in a, in a, a less vulnerable position if we didn't hit, hit our goals. It's just like playing devil's advocate. You could argue mm. that the philosophies of the Yi Hong Lee, I'm not saying we should do that now, but it was clear that they wanted to try and inject top level quality, which we're not doing right now. We're not signing a Bonucci right now. And again, it didn't work. Mm. Do you know what I mean? Would you say that's yeah, yeah. kind of a fair point in a way? In a, in a way, but I think I think Bonucci was the exception of mm. if you look at all those signings that we made, a lot of them were youngsters, players who had one or two good seasons in Serie A. Um, like, or, or I think, I, or a, yeah, I, yeah, I didn't quite understand. I guess the consistency of the philosophy of their signings. Bonucci's on itself was on an island in the sense of was a statement signing. What was Kalinic? What was Andre Silva? We essentially yeah. that I think that whole Andre Silva deal was because the relationship we had with his agent, um, is it Gestachu, whatever it is, like you yep. basically just done him a favor and then we were like, Oh, here's 38 mil and we and you know, fucking wasted that money royally. Um, you know, what was this, what was the philosophy philosophy behind Lucas Billiard to have what more of an experienced centre midfielder who like yeah. I, I don't know, I, I just and it, for me it was understand what formation you're going to play and then you saw it in that season as well with Montella and, and 
like it was like we were playing back three at one point and we were awful at it and then we played back four three three because that was our consistency in the previous seasons before like i i think we actually back then and still now suffer with an idea of signing players of of quality that will come in and give immediate impact and they will match the philosophy of how we want to play football in the right mm -hmm. formation mm -hmm. that's, ex that's as simple as what we need to do but we, we struggle to do that now because we are penny saving and and, and we did it back then with young uh, lee and all these signings because i, I think we it was just such chaos but it was a little bit closer because of the bonucci signing and this being a statement but in itself mm -hmm. it was a failure because i mean he, he didn't even work out himself so no but yeah yeah i mean maybe and maybe 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 that that in itself has paved the way to be so risk averse on the signings we I think do now you, i think you might be right because because you know i mean we we spoke about musa to death yesterday not to bring it up mm. again but like although we look at it from the from from the sort of scope now that we see that as a lot of money if it mm. does go wrong even if it goes really wrong, I don't think we'll ever lose money on Musa. We'll still be able to recoup from the amateurization and the money we spent. And I think you're quite right. I think mm. we've become so risk averse that we won't spend the 35, 40 million where it is likely that if it does go wrong, we will lose money. We're just not going to do that anymore. We're going to do it to the mm. point where we'll spend 20 knowing that if worse comes to worse, we could sell Musa back to Villarreal or sort of a lower level La Liga team for 10 or 15 and we'll get our money mm. back. Like we just mm. will. Um, but interestingly, I'm going to just have a look at, um, you're talking about player names. 2017, sure. I'm going to focus on both the 2017-2018 summer transfer window and the 2018-2019 summer transfer window, because they're the two that Yi Hong Lee, we both spent over 100 million. The reason I'm going to focus on both of them is because actually the 2017-18 window is the, the one that broke the market in the sense mm. that that was the one that Dembele uh, was sold and Neymar and it inflated prices. So actually, yeah. if I look at the list, there wasn't a huge number of of quality signings available but i will focus on the following season and the following season the list of players that we could have bought for the money that we spent on the likes of obviously uh, we're talking the following season so for the likes of let's have a quick look um paqueta caldara piatek kalinic castillejo mm -hmm. right these are all players that are above 20 million some of them 30 right mm -hmm. we could have bought i'm not even joking players like Courtois at goalkeeper, Joao Cancelo mm. when he was old, <laughs> um, Fabinho, uh, Vinicius Jr. I'm not even joking. Uh, these mm. players were all within our price range, all of them, yeah. in yeah. terms of what we spent and then what we got. So my question now is, how bad was our recruitment? Who actually was our head scout at that time? And mm. do you think now looking at our squad, which if you put them on paper, we how we are infinitely better in terms of the quality player for player generally speaking but why is it that we haven't been able to identify the right sort of ingredients that we need so we've clearly smartened up on the pricing structure but mm. it's still not i'm just trying to bring it into present day uh, i just want to know what yeah. your thoughts on that are because we just didn't buy the right players i know it's hindsight yeah. everything but we didn't <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I'm looking back at some of the signings. We, you know, that 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 moved around at that time. Benatia goes mm -hmm. from 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 Bayern Munich to, to Juventus on a loan deal with a right yep. to buy. I mean, that could have been a great signing. And we're talking about centre backs there, but ultimately, like, if we're talking about like risk averse and equally putting that the rest of the money we would have spent on, let's say, a Bonucci and, and Musaccio, which once again is combined probably to like 60 mil into Vidal. Vidal went to Barca. Yeah, yeah. I mean, there's the. I think yeah. what we didn't have, what we didn't have, and this is the bit where I think we need to be the difference between now and then is that we weren't in the, in the champions league mm -hmm. so were players True. going to make a move from like a, yeah like i said Benatia or even uh, vidal were they going to make a move from a side playing champions league football to a side then who just got back into europa league with no level of consistency so we, we were probably going to have to target certain players who weren't previously either playing in the champions league or equally ones who um who maybe bought into the project basically um so yeah, I, I think that's where the difference between now and then. Now is we actually lean in quite a lot because we're back in the Champions League. We we we, we rely on the players' will to get the yeah. signing across the line because we are Milan and we're back in the Champions League and this is San Siro. But because we built back the nostalgia to play for the club because we're back in the competition again. So True. I think there is a little bit of a difference. And I think our scouting has always been shit, to be honest. Moncada's got bits where he's successful, um, but a lot where it's... I, I question the logic I behind agree. a lot of the signings. Yeah. What I mean, before obviously um 
we sort of round up and and we really want to know what you guys are listening and get the comments in the discord or just generally because i think everyone's gonna have such an interesting opinion on on, on this particular subject because we've never spent so much money over those two years like it's so unlike ac milan uh to do that um you know we're very much uh like a club i don't know I don't know, like a, I keep, I keep using this example, but I hate it. But I do see a lot of similarities, like a Liverpool, that we, we, we are we are quite frugal with our money and the success we build is through a core of, of academy players and then really targeted signings. We've always been like that, historically. <laughs> How could we waste so much money? It's just insane. And mm. also, Steph, if, if this is completely hypothetical, if we had that injection of cash right now, with the management that we have right now between Elliot and Redbird, so the last sort of three, four seasons, do you think we would have made the right signings? And we were in the Champions League. So basically what I'm saying is if we give the current management and the management of the past, the sort of hybrid Redbird, Elliot management, the keys mm -hmm. or the funds that Yi Hong Lee had, what do you think they would have done with it? Mm. And we had the benefit of Champions League football and all the rest of it. What they, you know what I mean? It's such an interesting thought experiment. Yeah, I think I, it's once again. I'm, I'm trying to answer the question without the uh, the cloud of financial instability. So Lee spent the money, not caring about what mm -hmm. UEFA were going to do. Yes. Now everything we do is that's in the back of our mind. Every every five mil that we do or do not spend potentially mm -hmm. is in the is in the PNL sheet. So. I think if you basically said to both elements of management, don't worry about what UEFA have to care about, like will do to you and penalise us and just spend 200 mil, I don't think you get too far off on like an appetite to go for a certain quality of players. In And this is where Ibra would actually, I think, would have fun with it. But yeah, I think the, the reality is that we do have a management that because of what Lee did and literally brought us to a point where we were being like kicked out of Europe, um, we have to be a bit more sensible with the money that we spent um but look, i i think just what one one good exercise would be for for fans for you listening to this is that like i look i look back at the signings made that summer even with the money we did spend for the money we spent for bonucci um a certain mohammed salah was yeah i know <laughs> from, by, roma, by wasn't it? from roma <laughs> for liverpool, by liverpool and uh, i mean that's just it's I crazy. Thought about, I, I, thought I spoke to about just literally there about like the signings we could have made. Imagine, just imagine if we if we went for like a Salah um, instead of and that that money was not even just the Bonucci money, but like instead of spending that money on 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 Kalinic and um, yeah. and um, Andre Silva and Piatek the following year. Well, whatever. yeah, even just like in isolation, those two signings there is more than what Liverpool spent for Salah and just like even just a, a forward line of Salah. Uh, Suso or like Delastay behind the back are like to be honest, that's a fucking lot better than what we did have. Um, so yeah, I think there's, there's a lot, there's a lot of regret from that from that summer. Um, considering there was a lot of hope with what came finally spending the money. Yeah. But like, if there are some names that maybe, if you look back to who was maybe available, or you, we could have pried away from a certain club, or even that you know that didn't move, um, or even more sensible signings that would have just allowed us to have to build off. Um, and springboard off the off that season um then then obviously like throw them into the into the chat or the discord but there's we just we completely blew a massive opportunity um because i it basically spent all the money we got financially penalized and we came away with a fucking shit squad it was like, <laughs> it was it was it was the worst it was the worst yeah. thing that could have happened yeah yeah it's like it's like you all right you, you broke the bank kind of like kind of chelsea doing it all right you break the bank and you're like okay cool but at least we've got a squad here that's going to get us back into europe yeah. and then we might have to get kicked in the ass for a couple of your seasons for penalizing like but like they're like yeah but we've got a, a sick squad we spent a lot of money and I'm not comparing it to chelsea's money but they spent it's like billions but but like we spent a lot of money at the time and we stood ourselves out on a limb for what man we did fuck all with it also it's and, worth noting that even to this day to this day i think we're about a year maybe two years away from being completely mm. utterly in the clear to this day because of those yeah. two summers we are still like you said looking over our mm. shoulder having to make sure we cross every t and dot every single i to this day in 2024 yeah. because yeah. of how much damage and how crap it was back then it's kind of mad when you think about yeah. it this is why I feel like we should have just gone a halfway house, gone like, yeah, great, we got money, but like, spend like hundred mil, yeah, but like, sign three, four players, 
um obviously shrewd but like what did we need what's what formation did we want to play keep it to the 4-3-3 Montella would have would have kept us going in that keep the players who was doing quite well for us yeah like I just mentioned your Kuchkas and your your backers and like give it another year see if we get into the Champions League then reinvest again a little bit more and then see out some players and then just li little by little build that's kind of like what we do we're doing right now um mm. obviously not not particularly great with some some elements of it but like we have done that and it's been successful we just went for fucking bank and we it was a lesson and i think a lot of other clubs have looked at milan that summer and gone that's not how you build a squad you do not replace you know you don't throw in 11 fucking players i mean eight of them like starting players and then hope it's all going to click together like it was it was shocking it was awful we hope um in a way that this is kind of a positive exercise because as bad as yesterday was and as kind of unsure i think all milan fans are right now about fonseca and the management and the rest of it one thing we can say and i don't know how positive this is because we're ambitious we're obviously a huge club and, and we deserve to be at the top again but at least at least they're not retarded in terms of their actual like operations on a day-to-day -day basis you know at least mm -hmm. we're not going to be suddenly minus 100 million because of of crap management at least we have learned that lesson like you said steph um mm -hmm. it, it's crap that we had to learn that lesson and other clubs can probably like you said look at us and and, and avoid that for the most part but at least we can look at our squad and go all right we have got quality it might leave if we don't get champions league but we're not going to suddenly get kicked out of your wafer if we get back in you know that's not going to happen mm -hmm. uh, so really i know really like kind of stretching here but um it is it is interesting to think about yeah so it's, it's, a fun, no, it's a fun thing to do i think mean, i think <laughs> in light of, of salad the shit, salad be, one's hilarious <laughs> uh, yeah. and, well in light i think it's kind of it's kind of it's a little bit poetic in a sense of like as you said like where we're at right now is the pressing game we watched last night at Juventus um yeah we're struggling we're going to struggle to get top four this season um but like i think it's a good kind of exercise to take yourself back and go like what was even more of a chaotic time more of an embarrassing time in yeah. my opinion um and maybe that kind of maybe allows us to reflect a little bit more on, on the journey we've come along but equally as well i think it's a little bit of it for me that for me is what we have to lose as well because you know probably brings it back to going like that's how chaotic chaotic it was that's how shit it was and equally we got it all to lose in the sense of what we've built and if we don't currently right now address our issues and get into a top four we might see ourselves selling some of our star players and equally having to drop from squad squad quality perspective so yes um it's kind of like it's it's a good exercise to do because it takes you out of the current moment but in a way it does kind of bring you back to go like shit we we are not too far away from not rejoining the banner era but like no more so more so a drop in quality I mean, we we we're not we've not done that. We've done that no. and probably yes. like that a little bit. Yeah, but I would we agree. could we could we could go like that now if we have a really poor season. So, um, and if, if everyone listening in, I was trying to do some sort of like graph <laughs> graph of <laughs> of of of, of uh, non progressionary. <laughs> um, yeah. But yeah, anyway. yeah, guys, I hope you enjoyed listening to this this one. Um, also, I'm sure there's players that we've missed. Um, it, like obviously we'd love to know what you guys think uh, and like Steph said this is you know we're not trying to constantly look back mm. but these are interesting exercises because I think those summers were so pivotal for negatively obviously but they they have absolutely conditioned where we are as a club now so mm -hmm. it's relevant to look back at that um, yeah. so let us know what you think um, mm. and overall it's kind of positive <laughs> in a way take the positivity out of this you know that mm. we've got at least although they're frugal frugality is is probably better than 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 spending constantly you know that's never going to be good it's like the whole gambling anecdote you know thinking you can bet everything to, to get that big win to then be in the clear again mm -hmm. i think that's what we did with yi hong lee in, in a way and, and with the opposite of that now and i think although it's less exciting it's probably the the more stable of the two operations but it's not mm. perfect either yeah thanks guys they've got any last uh last words we'll have a look at the comments for the next video next week yeah. um i know there's a few ideas floating about so keep them coming in um what you'd like to see us and us talk about maybe some more topical subjects next week um looking to the future rather than at the past <laughs> um but yeah don't watch that uve game guys because <laughs> my god it was bad <laughs> Any thoughts, but, Steph? No.
burn the archive. It can't even make like, I'm actually curious to see what YouTube, the Milan channel puts up as the highlights. Like <laughs> 30 seconds. It's just that. like Mario Suma just going like, final whistle, that's it, basically. Yeah. <laughs> Oh. For Farnas, for Farnas, what layoff shot that, or the Reiner's yeah. a shot that goes to, oh, free kick rather that go, oh, uh, embarrassing. embarrassing. Anyway, guys, thanks yeah. for joining us. Uh, we'll see you next week. And uh, yeah, if you haven't joined Substack, join it. Get on the Discord. There's lots of chat going on there. And uh, have a lovely week next week, guys. Ciao, ciao.